Hello and welcome to Jackass. Uh, <laughs> now, this is a video where I'm going to teach you the secrets of life and also how electronic musicians make the sounds you hear in their music. Um, I occasionally see people asking the question of how it's made uh, online, and the answers are usually pretty complex and use a lot of terms that wouldn't really make sense if you don't understand the science behind it, which I'm sure a lot of the people who are just curious, they, they are just curious. They don't really understand the sound, the science. So this is, this is, uh, I'm aiming this to, for this to be a good video for people who are just curious about how synthesizers work or, um, are dipping their toe in electronic music and want to get started on synthesis themselves. Um, this should be a pretty simple explanation of how that works. So I'm currently using a program called FL Studio. It's uh, cheap compared to a lot of other music making programs and the possibilities in the program are endless, basically. Um, what I have open here is a synth and what you see here and here, um, the squiggly line, which you might recognize as a sine wave, is a visual representation of the change in pressure in your ear when I play a note. What I mean by that is the air against your eardrum is vibrating at a certain frequency. It's going back and forth, and how fast it goes back and forth is called the frequency. And if it goes slower, it's lower in pitch. If it goes faster, it's higher in pitch. And so it's lower and higher in frequency as well. So this is a low frequency sound, this is a high frequency sound, and everything from the lowest note to the highest note is that's not the highest note but you, you get what i mean is is everything in between is called the frequency spectrum there's a, f a spectrum of how fast you can go um so the the special thing about a sine wave is when you play it it is a single frequency this is all you get is that one frequency um if you add on frequencies to this by using, say, a, a triangle wave. This this wave also rep this graph also represents the vibrations against your ear. Um, but what's special about it is that you see that there's actually a lot of different sine waves playing at the same time. Um, this is your note. This is if you were playing a sine wave. This is what you would see. And then you've also got these littler sine waves stacked on top of that at different higher frequencies. And as you go higher in frequency, you go lower in volume. And this, these, these higher frequencies that are added onto the note are called harmonics. Um, so a triangle wave is more harmonically rich than a sine wave. And um, as we, we there's, there's four different common waves that electronic music producers use. Um, there's sines, triangles, uh, you've got squares, which are sort of like triangles, but with the sine waves uh, further up, kind of louder. And then you've got a saw wave, which adds even more harmonics, and it sounds very buzzy. And this one is special. Uh, this one is the one that people use the most because it is very harmonically rich. And what that means is that uh, sort of like Michelangelo can take a big slab of rock and make the statue of David out of that, what you can do is you can take a slab of frequencies like this um, and carve frequencies out. So you can take this out and um, change how that sound change how that sound sounds to us in the same way that these sounds are all changing we can change the sound with uh, our own tools so sort of like michelangelo uses a chisel electronic music producers use filters to carve out frequencies in in this sound so what we can do is we can use a low pass filter um, to pass the low frequencies below this cutoff point, this cutoff frequency. Um, so if we, we, we choose a middle cutoff frequency, it's going to be here. Everything below that point, everything lower in pitch goes through, everything higher in pitch gets cut off. And as we move that over time, we can get interesting 
sound. So what you can do uh, is is kind of you can tell the computer to play with this knob on its own so you don't have to go back and forth doing your own little sounds. So a practical example of, of a, a synthesis technique that people use is the dubstep wobble. So I can play a low low saw or, or low square note and then I can say, hey, I want you to move this knob up and down really fast so that I don't have to do it myself. So you can set this graph to say, hey, move the knob up and then down and then up and then down over time. And then you can change the speed of that. And what you get is the typical dubstep wobble sound. And then uh, another common sound that people use is uh, plucks, or I guess this isn't completely a pluck, but it's pretty similar. And this is kind of like the stuff that you hear in maybe uh, Fancy by Iggy Azalea. This is, that's probably the best um, example of this kind of sound that I can think of. And it obviously doesn't sound exactly like this. So how do we get past that point of just carving out frequencies? Well, you can add effects to it. So sort of like a distortion on a guitar or um, like a wah pedal on a guitar where they play a chord and then it goes wow, wow, wow. Uh, <laughs> that's a good impersonation. You can do that kind of stuff on your, on your, uh, in your own program, I guess, uh, like adding an echo. And that's called a delay. And then you can add a chorus, which makes it kind of thicker. And that's a sound that you hear a lot in 80s music. Um, and basically, you you continue to add on to the sound until you're happy with it. Or you continue to carve the sound until you're happy with it. Um, and that whole process is called subtractive synthesis. It's one of many different types of synthesis. Um, but this one is the most commonly used. And uh, it's a pretty effective one. So... Yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try my best to answer it. Uh, and I hope that clears things up as best as I can.